Remote ID, it might be the uh, in beginning of a new area in the manned air vehicle system, but it can also be the end of a hobby, uh, the hobby where you build and do it yourself, your UAV. My name is Tiziano Fiorenzani, and today I'm going to discuss with you the FAA Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, for which we have until March the 2nd to uh, comment and I'm going to put in the description below, you're going to find some link to where you can go and uh, post your comment about this new um, proposed rule. This is not a law yet. This is something that the FAA is going to submit to the Congress after this period is over and had read all the comments that we have posted on the website that I'm going to find in the description below. Immediately, I want to tell you that if you go, if you do want to go and post your comment, be extremely relevant because there are a lot of comments out here that I see that are 11,000, almost 11,000 comments. Uh, some of them are not very relevant. Comments like, uh, this is going to impact my finance, it's going to be extremely expensive to me. This is not relevant to the FAA. If you do want to have something to say, say it in a way that it's, of course, respectful. Don't uh, blame them because they're trying to do their job. But also, if you want to uh, propose something, propose something alternative. Uh, cr create solutions. Don't just whine about it. Uh, what is the remote ID? Remote ID can be extremely um, useful for companies that, and players that want to go toward the next generation of UAV. Uh, in all these years, we complain about that the drones are great, but we are limited to line of sight, except very, very few uh, situations. So the big, the big. Uh, industry is actually in beyond line of sight so uh, inspections beyond line of sight or delivery it's done all in beyond line of sight where you want to launch your system and the system is going to fly by itself uh, at this point the remote and uh, the remote id comes in handy because remote id says that if you are compliant with the um, standard id uh, basically you can fly with no restriction it's much much easier to fly with, with uh, over people and also at night and the standard ID is great for this kind of situations so what is the standard ID basically the UAV has to be equipped with a broadcast device that will share the drone ID and serial number and position and so on and so forth as well as the ground station position and all the data of his um, of his operator now it's not clear whether those data are going to be public or are actually uh, only part of it that's going to be public and the identity, for example, of the person in, uh, of the remote uh, pilot in command is uh, available only to the law enforcement. This is not extremely clear to me. If you have a better idea, uh, post it in the, in the comments below. But in general, standard ID means that the drone flies and broadcasts his own information. If you don't have if you don't abide to the standard ID then you have to go you have to be either limited ID or you can fly only in FAA recognized identification areas limited ID means that the UAV itself is not able to broadcast this information so it's your ground station that actually has to oh okay, I hit that that it's your ground station that actually has to share the your position the drone position and so on and so forth to uh, the internet so that means that if you don't have a ground cluster if you don't have an internet connection well you can fly and if you lose connection you have to land as soon as practical um, this is okay and great for example for close inspection or if you want to test your system but that means that your vehicle um, your ground station has to have all the necessary equipment to actually share information and the UAV has to be kept in constant line of sight and within 400 feet. Now, I don't know if you are aware, uh, for you there, for uh, people like me that are using metric, there's are 400 feet are almost 122 meters. It seems kind of like a very long range, but actually it is not. First of all, it's 122 meters radial. So it's 400 feet radial. That means that if the system is at 400 feet away of you, then it has to be on the ground. And if it's 400 feet high, well, it has to be right in, uh, on, on your head. Okay. So it's no more right. Uh, it's not a cylinder. It's actually a sphere, uh, actually a semisphere. So even that, it sounds like a little bit, I don't know, limiting. Uh, not only the range is actually 
very little for, for example, a fixed wing uh, aircraft that cannot even probably turn in 122 meters radius uh, diameter. But even for in, for in, uh, doing inspection and for doing a uh, job with your system with your UAV without being standardized, well, that's pretty limited. And if your system is not standard ID or limited ID, well, it has either to be less than 0.55 pounds, that means almost 150 grams, or you have to fly only in recognized identification areas. That's it. You can't fly anywhere else. So either your system is standard ID or limited ID, or if your or your system is below uh, 0.55 pounds, or you can't fly at all unless in identified areas. So these recognized identification areas are basically Aero Club, where you go and fly your, your, uh, your UAV or your amateur build. So uh, what can you do? Well, first of all, you have to educate yourself. Go online, uh, study as much as possible. I'm gonna point out a few um, link to videos and to the document itself. The document is huge. So it's hard to actually go and read it. Uh, there is a good video. There is a good video about here. That it's about the Pilot Institute. I'm gonna put it in the uh, comment below. It's about 40 minutes long, and this guy made a very good job in detailing whatever happens in this in this important rulemaking that is gonna affect all of us that are working in the drone industry. After that, uh, what you can do is go online to the federalregister.gov and submit your formal comment. Again, submit something that is relevant, something that is gonna help making the rule better, not destroy the rule. They're gonna make it anywhere and anyway, uh, besides your comment, they're gonna propose it. It's, it's our duty to submit something that is gonna probably prevent a disaster for the industry. Why I'm talking about a disaster? I'm talking about it because uh, industry is not made only uh, by big players that already have their nice packet that you can go online and buy a complete system that comes open a package has already is already standard id uh, compliant you go and fly actually you go and register you pay and then you fly that's not it the uh, industry is also made of developers developers that need to test their systems that needs to test their ideas before they can become a product and those product also the product that we see flying they are they they derive from the development that people like me like the thousands that are in uh, around the world are um, all the people that put their effort in creating the system we've, that we see today? Well, they act, most of them they flew in their backyard. I not say that you have to fly in their backyard. There has to be um, a compromise between you want to have your pizza delivered from from a UAV and you are able also to fly freely in your backyard. So there has to be a compromise. But certainly, in this rule making, there is a lack concerning developers. So. What can a person or a company do in order to de develop their product not being remote ID compliant yet and, and also not being able to go and fly in the FRIA because most of the companies or developers, they don't want to share the creation until the system is ready for the industry. So in my opinion, there's a little bit of a lack in this direction. Otherwise, going to, uh, toward a remote ID is actually very helpful for the industry, for operators that are going to actually um, use the full potential of the UAVs uh, in the future. For manufacturers that actually are actually uh, uh, able to sell and create systems that are thought to fly in beyond of sight. So again, go online, submit, um, educate yourself and submit your comment. We have and now today is today is February the 9th and we have uh, other 22 days so not long so we, again we have until March the 2nd to comment on this uh, proposed rulemaking so thank you guys for watching uh, by the way this is my new home I'm in Boston now and I still have to like clean it up a little bit and create a nicer environment but I just want to create, put up the, the whole stand and, 
and create this quick video for uh, your personal uh, awareness of this situation. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope to come back with other videos soon and I'll see you next time.